I'm Laura from Manchester Jewish Museum. I hope you've all been enjoying the Cheatham Festival so far. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. One of the fantastic projects that we are running whilst our building is closed at the moment is called Eat the Archives and we're looking for people to get involved. So we're working with the amazing Leo Burton who is a theatre chef and he's going to be helping us to uh, look at some stories from the collection and uh, learn about them through eating food, which is of course the best bit. So if you're into food, if you're into history or stories, this is the project for you. One of the things I found since working at the museum is the amazing range of Jewish foods that I've got to taste. Um, and the first one that you'll hear about today is something called barekas, which even I, who are the most worst cook in the world, had a go at this weekend and they've come out really good. Um, so I'm going to let you uh, find out more from Leo and I hope to see you soon. Hello everyone, this is Leo Burton. I was hoping to be able to join in with the Cheetham Festival this year from my garden, but as you can see, the weather made other decisions. As Laura explained in her really wonderful introduction, I describe myself as a theatre chef. And in short, what this means is what interests me most about food and cooking is the stories that come with our dishes. And today, the story I would like to tell you is about barekas. These delicate triangles of thin phyllo pastry are called barekas. They are a popular food in Sephardi Jewish cuisine and also found throughout the Mediterranean from Greece to Morocco. They can be made in a diversity of shapes and with a diversity of doughs and fillings. This triangular phyllo version is most often filled with spinach, egg and feta cheese. In Israel, rabbinic law determines that barekas made with puff pastry and dairy must be triangular. Barekas made with phyllo pastry and dairy, however, must be snake-shaped. This is in order to avoid breaking the kashrut law which requires observant Jews to avoid eating dairy and meat products together. Barekas are one of my all-time favourite foods to both eat and prepare. And that's because if barekas are on the menu, it means that I have at my disposal two of life's undeniable luxuries, both time and company. You see, barekas are an exercise in patience. Although the filling comes easily together in a few minutes, the preparation of each pastry strip is, although a simple process, it requires you to attend to it with care. You first need to cut the dough to size, being careful not to tear it apart, then lightly brush it with butter or olive oil. It will almost certainly take a few tries to measure out the perfect amount of filling before you can proceed to the delicate act of folding. Finally, a simple egg or oil wash is required so you can sprinkle your choice of sesame seeds, nigella seeds or za'atar and start all over again. Barekas are best suited to being made in batches of several dozens at a time for a crowd or to keep in the freezer for a future occasion. They're always best made with a friend or loved one, taking time to chat as you focus in on the mechanics of filling, folding and brushing, letting yourself be guided to the soothing, mechanical and almost magical rhythm of barekas. The care and patience required to make barekas can barely be guessed in this photograph of Annie Conway. As is often the case with ordinary people's stories, the information that's available to us in official records is limited. In my work with Manchester Jewish Museum, I've been fascinated by how when we try to find out a little more about the people who make up the collection, we begin to see a much bigger picture. You see, what the photo doesn't show is how the story of Annie and her barekas is in fact a story of finding out how to belong in a changing community. Annie Conway was in fact born Marianne Moore in 1907. 
and she became a convert to Judaism when she met and married waterproof garment maker Harry Cohen in 1936. The Cohens later changed their name to the anglicised Conway, and over the years Annie becomes a key member of the congregation at the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue which now houses the museum. As a talented embroiderer, she makes cushions for the synagogue and she's responsible for upholstering the arc doors. These photographs are thought to have been taken in the 1960s when the modest Jewish population of Cheatham Hill was dwindling, with many people relocating and attending shul in South Manchester instead. In these photographs, Annie's barakas are served during Oshana Rabbah, the culmination of the harvest festival of Sukkot. Oshana Rabbah is a joyous time of praying for a healthy and prosperous new year. A simple parcel of spinach, cheese and egg, meticulously prepared for a big feast, for a small crowd. In Annie Conway's hands, the Bereka is but a small clue of the dedication Annie brought to a community she did not originally belong in. As an Irish woman, it is unlikely that she had encountered many traditional Jewish foods before her marriage to Harry and her conversion. This story is just a taste of our new project, Eat the Archives, in which we will host a number of dinner parties in local people's homes around Greater Manchester. Laura and I will bring along a selection of artefacts and stories from the museum, along with food, which, like Annie's Barekas, give us an opportunity to have conversations about identity, belonging and community. Eat the Archives will be a joyous opportunity to wander together. What if we could taste history? What if we could get to know others through what they cook? There are many ways to be involved in a project, from having a go at making your own breakers to sending us your stories of delicious pastry parcels, as we know they feature in cultures from all over the world. You could also be one of our dinner party hosts. If you would like to find out more about the project, please get in touch with Laura via email at laura at manchesterjewishmuseum.com. Zeit gesund!